my name is <coughs> Curtis Manning. Um, I got a little note there. I'm a little nervous. This is the first time I've done this. I see a lot of y'all uh, week in and went out, week out. Cindy and Gary, y'all are wonderful, wonderful people. Um, brief, uh, brief background of myself. Um, I joined this church in 2012. A friend of mine, Christy Dotson, uh, brought me here. Um, I I grew up in the Lutheran faith, uh, both in San Antonio and here. My mother took us to, me and my brother and sister, to church every Sunday, sometimes whether we wanted to or not. But I have a, a good feeling, a good history about the church. We were able to, uh, in the Lutheran church, we went and did a lot of things. We went to the beach. We went to Schlitterbahn. We had a uh, vacation Bible school, and uh, I was act active with the younger kids in that. And I grew up, uh, I learned who Jesus was at a very young age, and uh, I learned to love Jesus. Um, went through a normal Leave it to Beaver kind of childhood, went away to college. Uh, God got me through a lot of tests and a lot of stuff I leaned on him through college. Um, my parents and my grandparents started a business here in the, in the 40s. It still prospers today. It's an a air conditioning business here. Grew up working for my dad, played football at Cal Allen, uh, went away to college, played some ball at Sam Houston State, did, uh, had a, a normal uh, life up until my late 20s. I worked for my dad, I made good money, bought a house, married a beautiful girl from here. Uh, everything was wonderful. And around 94, I drank some, but I wasn't heavy into drinking or anything else. And around 94, um, I was, pretty inebriated somewhere and I tried a, a new a new kind of chemical back then and uh, it was crack and I spent basically I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the problem I, I spent the best part of 20 years in active addiction um, I started using drugs uh, you know a little bit not too much and then I began using more and more and more, and I noticed that it was taking me away from my work, from my responsibilities in life, from bills, from my wife, and pretty soon, all those things I just mentioned were gone. Uh, it was by God's grace, you know, he never abandoned me. Uh, I turned my back on him. And it was by his, by his grace that I was able to live through some really awful events in those 20 years took me to some really dark places. Um, I never lived under a bridge. I never had to really live in my car. I had a skill that I had learned as a childhood in the family business, and I was able to keep a job and barely pay my bills, but I, I, went, I, w I was living in, in hell inside, uh, a dark, dark place. Uh, I knew what the answer was the whole time. I knew it was my faith. I knew it was Jesus. And uh, I, uh, somewhere around 2012, I had had enough. I uh, lived over here at off Park Street, and uh, a good friend of mine, Christy Dotson, recommended that I come to this church, which I hadn't been hadn't been to church in a long time before that. And so I came into this church, and the first two people I saw were these two people right here, Cindy and Gary. And uh, I came in. I love to sing, and I love Jesus. And when I, as soon as I walked in this church. I don't know, some people will talk about their hair standing up on the back of their neck or they're getting chill up. God's Holy Spirit moves inside of me. He actually moves. I feel something move. And I walked in these doors and it happened. Um, um, I can't explain it, but I, I went into the, uh, the, the wow service and I sang and I cried. And, uh, and God, God, I knew that God was with me again. And that's where my journey starts, my journey back. Um, it was recommended to me somewhere along the line that we get involved in a 12-step program. And uh, I went through one 12-step program, the, the AA thing, for a little while. And I had some substantial clean time, but I kept falling. I kept falling. I refused to surrender my entire life over to Christ. I, I would hold a little bit. Of, and uh, in that process, I was able to get links of clean time um, but I and you know I was still holding on a little bit 
to whatever it was. Uh, it was not of Christ. And uh, <clears throat> somewhere around October of last year, I surrendered. I surrendered my life to, to God. I was coming here every Sunday like I still do. And, and, I, and I started going to Narcotics Anonymous meetings where I found some people that were just like me and uh, that I could identify with and that uh, I was comfortable being around because I'm, I'm a little different than everybody. I, I have this thing and I, I don't know what it is, but it's, uh, I, I need to be involved. I need to take actions. And, uh, and uh, it is by God's grace that I'm able to take different actions today. Um, on February the 10th of this year, it was my dad's birthday coincidentally, I got on my knees and I begged God for another way out. Just, I, 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 I gave all my being up. I, I couldn't go on any longer, holding on to anything. And he opened a door for me. Uh, some of the places I've been in addiction, I should not have survived. Some of the places I've been in addiction, I should not have my health. Some of the places and things that I've done in addiction, I should not have my freedom. It is to God's glory, to Jesus' glory, that I'm standing here today. Amen. Um, I surrendered to the program on February 11th of this year. That's my final clean date. I have put no chemicals in my body since that date. Um, I got involved in service, going to meetings. Um, I met this kid that we started taking to meetings. Uh, his name was Nathaniel, and uh, my girlfriend, I, uh, we, we're, we go, to, we go to meetings on a daily basis. We don't miss them unless we're just really, really sick, just like, just like this house. We come to this house on Sundays. Um, met this kid, started taking him to meetings. I was, I had, God had provided a car for me. Um, we started going to meetings, which is another miracle, uh, that I got a driver's license again in a car. And this guy right here employed me, Josh Cruz, my best friend. Uh, you do God's work day in and day out. Um, made me employable. I developed a new skill <coughs> doing tile work. He's as good as it gets anywhere. Um, and I got to add to some of the skills. Uh, I've done demo work and uh, ripping out houses and then uh, coming back with sheetrock and creating something new. But I met this kid, Nathaniel. We started taking him to meetings. He was, uh, um, he's a little different. He uh, had some mental disorders from a car crash he had a few years before, but he was a good guy. Uh, I love Nathaniel like my brother. We uh, went and um, he was a friend of my girlfriend's. We started going to meetings, started going to meetings. And I noticed one night he wasn't there. And then uh, we went to a, our meeting, our noon meeting the next day. And uh, somebody had told us his parents had just left that he had died. And uh, so we immediately went to his parents' house and talked to them and cried with them and uh, shared shared our experience with God and Christ. And um, they asked if we knew of anybody that would be able to do the service. We recommended the church, our church family here and, and uh, FUMC. They made the call, that's where I met Monty, and got to know Monty, and uh, at the funeral thing, I, uh, I something happened that makes no apps, I've searched my head, I can't find the answer. Something that makes no sense whatsoever. We were at the funeral, we were asked to be pallbearers, and uh, me and some other guys that are in Narcotics Anonymous um, were sitting in the front row and, and they had the viewing and I went up there to view it and I was looking at it and I held his hand, it was cold, and I prayed that God would accept his soul into, his ha into God's house because uh, I don't know, I'm not real sure about his faith, but I prayed for him and I, uh, Nathaniel was like a, a child. He uh, suffered some mental stuff and he, I, I loved the kid. He was just a good kid. And, uh, did not deserve to die so early. He did. Uh, he did use drugs to end his life. Um, I looked at him. I was getting ready to go back to the pew, and I looked again, and it was me that was in the box. <sighs> it was me. I. Uh, I had about. 40, 30 or 40 days clean, um, somewhere around 60. That stuck, it was drilled into me, and I saw it at night. I'd had, a dream and I'd remember it. Um, I know what's on the other side of using drugs for me. God has made that very clear to me. 
Um, I do everything I can every day to reach out to the next person who was like me 10 months ago and couldn't stay clean. I chair meetings in Narcotics Anonymous. I am involved with that fellowship. I'm involved in the church. Other blessings have came, have come because of, uh, because of my surrender. I'm able to tithe. Uh, business has increased. Uh, my life, I now have two vehicles. I now have, I love this woman with all my heart. She's wonderful. I have love in my life. I have friendship in my life. I have a family here at, at, uh, at this church. I have another family among Narcotics Anonymous. My dad, who told me he never wanted to speak to me again in 07 when we buried my grandfather, the greatest man I've ever known. I talk to him every day now. Um, Amen. He's, he, God has restored. I, I, sometimes we're sick and we can't come to church. We watch TV, church on TV. Joel Osteen talks about how God is a, a, he, uh, is a renovation God. He is. He's restored my life. I have love in my life. I have all these things that I, I didn't have for two decades. And, uh, and it's all, to, all to, to your glory, God. It's, it's not, I'll, all I do is follow direction. They tell me in, in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, I follow direction. I, I'm a Methodist. We get up in the morning, the first thing I do after I put coffee on is give thanks to God. We get into the Word of God. We have a thing online from faith to faith. It's the Copeland's. Uh, we read. It's a daily devotional. Then we get directly into God's Word. Um, that's how I start my day. Uh, we start. We start afresh. I get a new thing. I pray. I pray God write those things in my heart that we read from His Word. Uh, I now have. Uh, <laughs> I now have people that work for me that are new in recovery that remind me of me, and I have to stay humble and all these tolerant and all these uh, spiritual principles that I got from the book from the Bible, and I got from the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, and I got from being around good people and good, honest, uh, God-loving people. Um, I make no bones about it. God is responsible for what's happened in my life in the last 10 months. I take no credit. All I do is exactly what he puts in front of me, and I've learned to live in the moment and to enjoy the moment and to give him thanks and praise. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.